Hey, it's Ben Housel here, and here in this tutorial, we're gonna have a look at how we add transitions and fades to black in Final Cut Pro 10 using the built-in plugins. We're gonna have a look at a couple of different methods of this, um, and then we're also gonna have a look at what we can do when we can't add a standard transition. So when the clips aren't overlapping, how do we deal with that? Uh, this video is sponsored by FX Factory, so please do go and check them out. Uh, but without further ado, let's dive in and have a look at how we add transitions and fades to black in Final Cut Pro 10. So the first thing we're gonna do here is just come up to Window, workspaces and we're going to jump to the default workspace just so we're all looking at the same Final Cut Pro 10 layout. Now I've already added a few different clips onto my timeline here and if I do shift and Z it is going to zoom to fit so that's the kind of first shortcut here we can see all the different clips and a couple things to note about transitions when you're working with them the one main thing is that we need to have for most transitions, some overlap uh, with those transitions. So essentially, when we're actually adding transitions from the transitions browser, we need to have an overlap between those clips. Now to create that overlap, it's as simple as trimming down your clips as soon as you've added them to the timeline or at any point after you've added them to the timeline. So if I grab a couple of clips here, down to the timeline, then to make that overlap happen, as you could see in the image before, we're basically trimming down the clips by a second or two or however much kind of works with your edit and now if we double click on this edit point you can see we've got these overlap areas in these clips now if we jump into the transitions browser on the right hand side here you can see we've got a whole range of different transitions in here and i've got some extra ones added in and some different plugins and stuff like that um, we're going to have a look first of all at the standard kind of cross dissolve transition and how that works. So normally with most edits, if you've trimmed down your clips a bit, you should be able to grab your cross dissolve and drop it right onto an edit point. And basically that will add your first transition. And then there's a few different controls within that transition that allows to modify it. So we can make the transition longer um, by hovering over these kind of bottom left and right portions of it and stretching it out. And you can see now the new time on the left hand side there and the time I've added to that transition. And if I highlight my transition, it's going to show me now that my transition here is four seconds long. So it's just going to be a much slower transition between those two clips. Now, when I add a transition up in the inspector at the top right, which if you don't see it, just go to window, show in workspace and check the inspector. And we see a few different options here. We've got some different easing options for kind of how our transition fades in and out. And um, we've got some different looks up here as well. So if we come to the middle of our transition, you can see when we change these looks, it's gonna add that cross dissolve in some different ways. So you can make the transition a bit punchier, um, a bit different by modifying some of these to kind of fit the style of your edit in Final Cut Pro 10. So we'll stick with the additive one, which looks quite good here. So you can see that transition's working nicely. Now, as well as the controls up in the inspector here, we've got a couple more controls um, down here in the timeline. So the first one is these two little triangles in the middle here, which allows to change where that transition falls. So you can see on the left and right here, basically I'm able to move that transition as long as I've got overlapping footage. And you can see here, when I drag too far to the left, I get that red bar, which indicates that I've reached the the media limit of this clip on the right hand side. Now one other thing I can do is if I click these two little double lines it's actually going to shorten the clip before or lengthen the clip before or shorten or lengthen the clip afterwards and again you can see I'm reaching that media limit which basically means that there's no overlap for those particular clips. So a common message that will pop up when you're editing in Final Cut Pro 10 will just come to the end of our timeline here and grab a couple of raw clips without any trimming on them. Just gonna drop the sound of these down. So we'll grab a couple of shorter clips here. So I haven't trimmed these clips down. Um, basically they're the, the kind of raw footage when you push record on the camera. And you can see now when I add the cross dissolve there, it doesn't drop straight onto the timeline. We get this message which is basically saying that in order to add the clip, which Final Cut Pro can do, it's going to shorten the clips. So basically, when we hit Create Transition, you can see that second clip is kind of being pulled back a little bit. So it's not an error message, it's just telling us that Final Cut Pro has to nudge our timeline 
in order to make that transition happen. So that's how to add the most basic transition, the cross dissolve. So if we just leave that there, our cross dissolve now that it's made, we'll come back to some of our other edit points and we're gonna jump to this fade to color transition. So you'll see this clip now, when it transitions, will fade to black in the first instance. If we highlight this, we get some extra options up in this fade to color transition. So you can see if we drop down here, we can change the color that that transition is gonna to drop to. So you can see now it's gonna to flash to magenta and we can also change the time that it's gonna kind of hold that magenta as well. So if we modify the length of this a little bit, you can see now it's gonna hold that transition. So useful if you wanna overlay some text over the middle here, maybe you wanna hold that color for quite a period of time so you can have a logo flash across or something like that. So that's the fade to color transition. And then we have some other transitions as well. So if we come down to things like the wipes, you can see we've got these different wipes. So something like a clock wipe. Now it's combining the transitions with an animation. So rather than just fading between the clips or fading from the clips to a color back to the second clip, we're actually getting a fade with this animation. And these animations can be quite fun to use. So you can see we've got some other wipes we can use. And then when you're in the middle here, we get these on-screen controllers, which allow us to modify certain functions of these transitions. So you can see we can change the direction it's happening. So maybe this direction works a bit better. So it's now coming down rather than moving up, but you get the idea. So we can basically, so we get these nice kind of level of control over the transition and how it's working you can also see up in the inspector here that we get this option for the edge treatment. So at the moment, we have the edge type set to feather, but we can set it to a solid color. So it would be a solid border, and then we can modify the width of that. Again, we can kind of change the, the color of that. Now our transition, rather than being that gradient, will be a straight line, and that straight line can happen at an angle as well. So we can change the angle at which that line is moving across. And oftentimes you'll wanna match that movement of that line with something that's happening in the clips either side of it. Now let's move to the end of our sequence here. Actually, we'll delete these last two clips and we're gonna add a fade to black at the end here. So essentially for a fade to black, there's a couple of ways of doing it. Uh, the first and most easy way is to grab a cross dissolve and then we can have that fade to black so you can see that works pretty well. We can extend it. We can make it longer if we need to. So if we want a slower fade to black. Now I did get the question of what happens if we want our music track to, to kind of run beyond the end of our clip is. So I'm just gonna grab a music track here. In fact, we'll just do Shift and Z so we can see the whole timeline. And then we'll come to our finder and we'll drop a track onto the timeline. Now, when we export out here, you can see actually the music track does run beyond the end of that clip. So when we're playing this back, the export will still actually kind of run beyond that. If we want to sort of have a bit more control or kind of see where the edit is ending and kind of control what's happening at the end here, or feel like we're a bit more control of what's happening at the end here, then we can come up to our generators. And there's probably a couple of different ways of doing this, but we'll grab a solid color generator and we'll just grab a custom one. We can drop it right at the end of our clip. So this black clip now will mean that we can run that to the duration of our music. So if we want our movie to end, it's a fade to black, but the music to kind of run on, then that will work. This also means we could pop a color in here as well if we wanted to. So let's delete this now and we'll have a look at one other way of making a fade to black, and that is by controlling the opacity. So if I click on my clip here, we'll zoom into this a bit, so Command and Plus to zoom in, and then I'm gonna come up to my inspector in my video tab here. I'm gonna add a keyframe for when my opacity is 100%, come to the end here, and then drop this down to zero. So essentially, my clip is gonna fade out and actually to make it transparent on the very last frame, I just need to come back one frame here and then make this zero here and that will make it black. So now you can see this is fading out and it fades to black.
Now, if I right click here, I can go to show my video animation and you can see I'm controlling the opacity with these keyframes so I can make it quicker or shorter. And depending on how you like to work, doing it this way could be useful in certain scenarios. So let's have a look at what happens when we can't add a transition between two clips or a kind of traditional transition. So I'm just going to grab a couple of clips right at the end here. And we looked at what happens with the media limits, which is really to do with the fact that we've selected the whole clip here and there's nothing either side of that that can move. So let's grab these two clips. So between these two clips, we're imagining we're making a music video or something like that and we can't uh, shorten these clips. In fact, let's just move these around the other way. So if I add cross dissolve there, it's going to ask me to shorten the clips, which I don't want to do. So this is where a plugin from FX Factory comes in handy. So this Cineflare Smooth plugin um, basically allows you to add a little bit of animation at the end and the beginning of the next clip. So if we grab these two first Cineflare screen plugins, you can see basically what's happening is we're kind of animating between those two clips. So we don't need to shorten those clips in order to make that happen. And what's also nice in here as well is that Cineflare Smooth has this motion blur attached to it too. So we can drop this in here. And you can see now when we play this back, we get this nice movement. It looks pretty seamless. And we can use this in a few different ways. So we've got some different kind of beginnings. So the first one is our beginning and then end of our transition. So you can see we get these nice little bounces and movements that work really well. And then we can just add the motion blur on top there to smooth it out. And we'll just add a couple of these just so you can see how they're working. A few different ones. Obviously the built-in transitions are great as well. And we can just duplicate this motion blur from here to here by holding down the Alt key and then just stretch it out. So we can play these few transitions through. And you can see all of these have a kind of nice place within your kind of Final Cut Pro 10 toolkit, whether you're using the built-in transitions, adding a transitions pack like Cineflare Smooth, or even creating your own transitions in Apple Motion. So hopefully this has been a useful introduction to how to use transitions in Final Cut Pro 10. I think one last thing that I will mention is that if I just delete the transitions I've got here, the default transition in Final Cut Pro is the cross dissolve, which means that if we hover over any edit point or use the up and down cursors to move to an edit point, we can use Command and T to add that default transition. If you want to change this, so for instance, if we wanted to change to one of the movement transitions, so let's have a look at the, the push transition. If we right click on this, we can make it the default transition. So now when I hover over here and do Command and T, rather than the default cross dissolve, it's going to add that push transition. Now where that's nice is if you need to add transitions to a lot of clips, so in a slideshow or presentation or something like that, we can select all those clips, do Command and T, and it will create a transition on all of those. So we can kind of set things up really quickly. If we've added transitions to a ton of stuff and we want to remove them, we can also come to our index and you can see here, we can see the push transition is listed in here. If I search for push in my index, you can see I can highlight all of those, click back once on my timeline and then delete them all. So we have a lot of flexibility for adding transitions for how we modify the length of transitions and then also for plugins like Cineflare Smooth which give us lots of very cool transitions options as well as being able to build our own in Apple Motion. If you'd like to see kind of more tutorials on transitions or like to know how to make your own transitions in Apple Motion then do leave a comment below or if you've seen a transitions pack that you really love then do leave a comment below. I'm always interested to kind of find new plugins, new ways that people are doing things in Final Cut Pro 10, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.